talk about dashboarding and how to build a good dashboard and some of the things you should do for hygiene for them. In order to start this off, let's just talk about how to build a dashboard. First thing you'll want to do is you'll come into your app, whether it be search reporting, whatever, you come down and usually you might find a dashboard here, or in this case, I've got it buried under. So it'll drop down. I'm going to go click my dashboards icon. And then I'm going to come down here. These are all the dashboards I have. I'm going to go create a new dashboard. And we need to give it a name. So we're going to give it YouTube Dashboard. Give it a description. We're going to, we're going to give it, we're going to start looking into the source IPs. Um, you should always have an idea of why you're building a dashboard. As a general rule, you should be focusing on one element. It's not the best practice to tow, grab from a whole bunch of different indexes and a whole bunch of different source types. It should be relatively focused. Um, there's always rule, reasons to break those rules, but we're going to try to keep it very restricted down into one index, one source type, etc. I can make it private or shared in the app. I'm going to make it private. We're going to do classic dashboards. I will have a different video for Dashboard Studio. Both are really cool features, and, and they work just slightly different. So we're going to go with the old, the classic dashboards. Um, it's up for the first demo here. So we now have our brand new dashboard. First thing I like to do, I like to come here and I add input. We can see that we can do text, radio, drop down, check boxes, time, submit. I typically like a time icon. I don't want to have it just drawing all from all different, letting Splunk decide the time for me. I like to be able to pick the time here, so I like to put that in. Um, also, if you're going to have lots of uh, choices up here at the top, you might want a submit button. In our case, let's just start with a submit button. That way, if I, don't, if I have a submit button here, anything I change along these different uh, inputs, you'll have to hit the submit button before it actually tries to run the query. If you don't have a submit button, you make a change along here, it'll automatically restart the query. And for performance purposes, I'm a bigger fan of uh, manually starting the query. There's reasons to do both, but we'll just keep it simple for right now. We're going to talk about, we're just going to keep it to uh, a submit button. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to run a query. So we need to go put, we need to, we've got our input. We're going to look at the last 24 hours and we're going to add a panel. And we can grab one from a report. We'll have a different video on that where you can build reports. We're just going to build one from scratch. Events, that's the, uh, the, the whole thing that you, you normally see when you run Splunk without running tables or fields. It's difficult to read. In my opinion, I usually don't use events. I'm a big fan of statistics table or if you're going to start doing charts. But for the most simple purpose, let's just do a statistics table. So I'm going to grab. I can now use the time picker. If I didn't have... My, dry, my time here, it would automatically stick with this time picker, and then you would change the time inside the actual query. But because I have this time picker here, I'm going to use the shared time picker. And I'm going to give it a title, um, uh, con logs. And we're going to make this real simple. We're going to say index equals lame training, source type equals lame con table, source IP, st IP, direction, bytes in, bytes out. Uh, you know, well, let's put a time field in there too, just for kicks and giggles. All right, if I add that to the dashboard, so I'm going to give myself a little dashboard right here. And we can see that I have different I have con logs, I have source IP, destination IP, direction, bytes in, bytes out, just like I asked for. I can then hit save. I recommend hitting save frequently so that you have the stuff you want, uh, so you don't lose it in case something goes wrong. I can now flip this and say, hey, go grab me the last 60 minutes worth of logs. And I hit that submit button, and now I have a new, new thing. That's, that's dashboarding in its most simple form. Now what we want to do is we want to show the ability to be a little more granular. Great, we got it by time, but maybe I want to pick it based off of a field or something in my dashboard. And so in order to do that, let's we're going to go back to this edit button. 
and I'm going to say I want a text box. And this text box, I'm going to give it a label here, and I'm going to say source IP. And I'm going to uh, I want the user to be able to input a source IP, and we'll search for anything with that. So we're going to put a token, and I'm going to do my source IP. You can put any name you want in there. Just remember what you wrote. We'll, we can give a default value if we want, an initial value, and I'm going to put a default value as uh, please enter an IP. If I do something like that, it's not going to work. For It's going to go put please enter an IP, and if you hit submit, we're going to get back uh, no results because there are no, one, we haven't done anything with this table, and two, no source IP will match. Please enter an IP. But that's the initial setup. So we remember, what did we call this little uh, token? I'm just going to copy and paste. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go edit the search. And I'm going to say source IP equals, and we put that token in. Now, in order for Splunk to know it's a token, you need to put a dollar sign at the front and a dollar sign at the end. And if you do that, it will go grab the value that's put in that little text box and apply it here. So if I hit apply, we get back no results. And we shouldn't. There is no IP called please enter an IP. But if we go ahead and hit save, I just want to show. If I open and search, a nice little troubleshooting what's going on. It wrote my index equals lame training source type. Unfortunately, source IP equals, and recognize this is actually source IP equals please, and then it's actually looking for or, I mean, and, enter, and, an IP. So this is not written even as a sentence. So let's show how you would write that. First thing you do, if you wanted it, so it would come in, we need to put this in quotes. So it'll keep the thing as one word, as one variable, not uh, apply that and everything. Still, I'm not going to get any results. Oops, I don't want to export. I want to hit open and search. But now we see that the entire variable is contained within double quotes. And so it's actually now looking for source IP equals please enter an IP. We don't have an IP like that, but at least we now have it working so it's keeping those strings together. Now I can just come in and I can go 10.0.0.1. If I hit submit, I'm going to get back everything where the source IP is 10.0.0.1. And just like that, I have it working. Let's talk about putting a different input in. What if I want to use a drop down? And we could use a drop down and say, hey, I want to use based off direction. So we're going to pick a little right here. We're going to say direction. In this situation, um, my direction, we're not going to give any initial value. What we want to do is we're going to do a star, give it a, a base value of, we're going to say both directions. And we're going to give it a star, meaning it's automatically just going to put the wild card in there so it'll autom all values will automatically qualify. And what we can do here, we know that we have internal and external. So I'm just going to write internal and write internal. And I'm going to write external and I'm put external right there. I'm going to apply. Oh, we don't have an external. We have an outbound. So that's not going to work for us. We need to put, I can write external and I can put outbound here. This is what the user is going to see. This is the value that's going to be sent to Splunk. Keep them, keep it simple. I would name them both the same thing. But I just wanted to let you know you can do it either way. If I hit apply, now I have the option to go both directions, internal or outbound. Now I don't like the fact that it says select right here. So how do I fix that? I come to my uh, default, and I'm going to say that we're going to set, select both directions as my default value and my initial value. If I do that, 
every time it'll automatically start with both directions. Now what I need to do is we need to change this. So now we have to have direction equals my direction. What was the name of this token? My direction. Direction equals my direction dollar signs on both sides. And now it's going to apply that one as well. If I hit submit, we're going to get internal and outbound. Why? Because this is defaulting to, oops, I want to come down here. I'm going to save, the, save it so I can see what it's actually running. Direction equals star, because that was what I said for my default there. So everything is internals meets that, external outbound meets that, unknown meets that. It's all going to be the same. So let's, but if I switch this to internal, I'm not 100% sure why I got this lovely Java error. If I refresh the page, it did exactly what I asked it to. It's only doing internals. If I uh, make sure to refresh this page, now we got the internal and no little Java. That was an interesting little thing there, but it, the query still worked. So now I've got all my 10 addresses and internal. What if I want outbound? Hit submit. Notice though it keeps saying could not create search. The reason it can't create a search is I manually hand typed my my values in here. I could take these out and I could actually write a query. So I could go index equals lame training, source type equals lame con, stats count by direction. And now I have a direction field. And what do I want? I'm going to have the direction be the label. That's what the person sees and value is also direction, meaning I use this little field, getting the direction field. I can do a mixture of both, use this, but you don't want to repeat what's coming back from here. It'll tell you, hey, I got duplicate values. What do I want to do with that? So I'm not going to use both, but let's just add, could add a third one. And that actually we're already using a third one because we got both directions. So we'll just skip that. So this will take the results of this query and add them to the bottom of what I've already supplied. And now that cannot create search has disappeared. And notice I have this blank value because we had some blanks. I have an internal and an outbound. And so if I click, you can't click that blank. We'll have to address that in another video. The Splunk does not like null. All right, so we've got that going. We've got an internal and outbound. If I click internal, that works. We can choose outbound. And that works. Now, what if we want to give, we'll go to the next one here. We've got, there's the most, next most common one I see is multi-select. And in this situation, you might be wanting to select multiple values. So I'm going to go and we're going to make this destination IPs. I'm going to write dest IP and we want a delimiter because you're going to be able to select multiple values. And so the biggest thing we want is a comma and a space. You can now see value one will come in, then a comma, value two comes in, etc. And so we're going to start with star, star. That way we, we have our default, use them all. And then we're going to just come in here, index equals lame training, source type equals lame con, stats count by dest IP, and now I'm just going to supply the dest IP. Hit that. And now I have a whole list. I can just start grabbing different values and use them. Or here's my star to use them all. If I want to get rid of them, I can click them. Now I need to make them apply here. So just like we've done before, I'm going to go dest IP. The problem is now I have a, a list. And one of the, e if I do this, it's not going to fit very well in there. So one of the easiest way to do it is dest IP, do it in, 
and then we put it in parentheses here. And now like that, it's going to just keep putting them in. Remember, it was going to put them in as comma list. What does the end want? Just a comma list. And so you're good to go. I hit apply. Let's change this to any. Let's go change this to both directions. So let's see what was written. Oh, I already know what I did wrong. One, we wrote a variable wrong. So there's dest IP coming in wrong. So let's fix that. Edit. Oops, that's not our issue here. We're going to come through and we're going to grab dest IP. It's important that you put dollar signs on both sides. Hit apply. Now we've got that. So if I go and grab, say, 10.0.2, I know it exists because it's right there. And I'm going to go grab 10.0.15. I hit submit. I'm going to get back all of those logs. And so just like that, we have created tokenized fields for Splunk um, and for our dashboard. We have we can go search these, we can use the lookups, etc., and we can just pass in the tokens using the source IP, direction, destination IP, and a submit button. I hope this was helpful. If this, if this was, please uh, like this video, and if you want to, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps with my uh, uh, developing of the content. I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.